Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're taking a look at the Big Idea Design Thai Ultra Pen. Um, real quick, huge thanks to Joe over there um, for sending this along to me for review. Um, this was provided free of charge. Not going to like to impact my review at all. Even though I do like the pen quite a bit, I do have some issues with it, which we'll discuss shortly. Um, but yeah, thanks to, the, thanks to everyone over there for uh, letting me check this out. Um, this is the first pen in a long time I've been really, really excited about. It's uh, It has a lot of potential. And it's really, really appealing to kind of a mass market. I think it's one of those things that could kind of get more people into fountain pens, um, potentially if the price were a little bit lower, but we'll discuss that later. All right, first, let's go ahead and jump into some size comparisons. All right, got some weird ones today. Um, so I wanted to cover a few different price points, but also talk about some pens that are in a similar price range or have a similar kind of appeal to the uh, Thai Ultra pen. So first up, we have the Thai Ultra, of course, at the bottom. The Nalami Safari, Pilot Vanishing Point, Keros Customs Decagraph, and the Sailor 1911 Large. So as you can see, it's right up there with all of these pens. It's a fairly substantial pen. It's not huge. It's not like Pelican M1000 size or anything like that, but it's pretty big. Um, <clears throat> so you can see, it's again, it's, it's right up here with all these. Um, there's a little bit of size variation among these, but not very much. All right, with all these pens uncapped, you can see that it's a little bit longer than the Sailor here. Um, it's very, very close in size to the uh, Decagraph, so if you have one of those, or if you're looking at the two, they're pretty close in size, so if you've tried out either one, you'll kind of know about what size the other one is, although they do have a few key differences. It's, of course, shorter than the Vanishing Point. Um, the pen's huge when it's open, I guess, um, and it's very, very similar to the Lamy Safari. It's a little bit shorter, not by much. Um, overall length is pretty similar because of a much longer nib. But in terms of uh, from the grip section back to the finial, um, it's it's pretty close, maybe an eighth of an inch, somewhere around there. So if you have those, uh, <clears throat> the uh, Lamy Safari, you can kind of expect something similarly sized, although a much different weight on this one. All right, on to what I like about the pen. So first up, the design. Um, it's it's a very appealing, you know, kind of flat top pen design. Pretty classic looking, but it's very minimalist. Um, they kept everything super subtle here especially like like the branding i really appreciate that um you can see the ti which is the atomic symbol for titanium um that's really the only branding that you're going to get on this pen that is visible when it's closed there's nothing else here so if you know the company you know who made it but other than that it's it's very very minimal you're no, nothing's you know standing out it looks like a plain pen Next up, the material. So titanium was used um, to make this pen, as well as the clip, I believe. And actually, the uh, one of the nibs as well is uh, titanium. So that kind of constant theme throughout is really interesting. And you can get this in a couple of different finishes. They have this one, and then they also have a stone washed finish, which is a little bit darker, a little more rough looking, um, if you're into that. The capping is also very, very pleasant on this pen. If you look right here, you'll see there's an O-ring. Uh, there's one for where the body meets the section as well. Um, but what that does, normally on a lot of uh, metal cap and metal body pens, such as the Keras Customs, not to throw them under the pots, I like that pen, but you get a little bit of uh, cap wiggle when it's closed. On this one, because of that O-ring, you get nothing. It's, it's super, super solid. There's no play at all. And it's a really small touch, but I really, really appreciate that coming from having tried, you know, a few different uh, similar style pens. That's that's a great little detail that they touched upon. The size and weight on this are also really good. It's fairly hefty. Um, titanium's heavier than aluminum, but lighter than steel. But it's not ridiculous. Um, it doesn't feel, you know, super, super heavy in my hand. And the size is just about perfect for me. Um... I wouldn't hate it if it were a little longer, but I don't need it to be either. It's it's perfect. Grip section size is also really, really good. It's super, super long. Um, as you probably noticed in the size comparisons, I'd say it's probably an inch and a quarter maybe, somewhere right around there. And a nice little touch they did, um, so it's, it's textured obviously. There's uh, these rings cut into it. But here at the very end, you'll actually see the screw thread or the cap threads. Um, so the fact that they kind of integrated that into the grip is really, really nice. And what that does is that really reduces the step down right here as well. So it's not a huge drastic fall off or anything like that. Um, and the caps, it's flush with the body when it's closed. It's really, really impressive little design they did there. Um, and I really, really like that. The clip is also pretty good. It sits very, very deep in the pocket. 
Um, somewhat similar to a, a deep carry clip on a, uh, a pocket knife. Uh, for example, like the, the Kershaw Mini Natrix here. Um, so you can see it's not quite as deep as this one in particular, but there's very, very little of that pin that's going to stick out of your pocket if that matters to you. Um, the clip is titanium as well, and it's it's fairly springy. It has good retention, though. I, I'm not worried about this coming out of my pocket at any time. And it's just a, I don't know, it's a simplistic clip that I think really, really fits with the pen. I'm kind of glad they didn't do like a 3D milled clip or anything. I think that would have looked a little odd and maybe not have been as, uh, wouldn't have been as appealing uh, to, to keep in the pocket. But I think this matches the design very, very well. And I like how they implemented that clip here. The flexibility of this pen is what really appealed to me, though. So this is this is crazy. Um, so when you buy this pen, you get a titanium nib, you get a steel nib, and you get a rollerball section. It doesn't... The, the flexibility part doesn't really stop there, though, because that rollerball section, as far as I can tell from the half dozen or so different types of refills that I've tried, works with every single refill type um, that I can find for it. So let me show you here what you get when you um, when you receive this this pen. So you get this box here, and in this box, as you can see on the front, it says fountain pen, roller ball, ball point. In this box, though, um, you get a, a paper that explains basically what I, what I just mentioned, and you get the pen in the middle. You get some extra O rings, which is a really really nice touch. You get your steel nib unit here and you get an entire extra grip section that is compatible with roller balls. Um, and I'll roll in some footage now of the refill changing mechanism. It's very, very interesting actually. But this is what makes this pen so appealing to me personally. Um, because so often you'll find a pen that you really, really like. And fountain pens just aren't that practical um, when you're going out and you need to write on a variety of surfaces uh, that you really can't control the the paper type you know so it's it's amazing that if you if you really like this pen if you get this pen and you love it you can swap out the nib section for the rollerball section toss it in your pocket and go and that's what I've done a lot with this pen um, when I do my my notes here at home whatever I'm writing um, I'll, I'll use the fountain pen section, either the steel or titanium nib. Uh, I tested both. And then if I take this pen out, you know, if, if I know I'm going to be writing on a receipt or filling up paperwork or something like that, then I'll swap over the rollerball section and take it with me. And it's it's fine. It takes, you know, 30 seconds. And um, it's, it's just, it's so nice to have that, all of that utility in one pen. Um, you do pay for it a little bit, but I think the price is perfectly reasonable for this. So the price on this is $240. Um, that certainly sounds a little high, you know, up there you're right around gold nib territory for a lot of pens, but you do have to keep in mind a couple of things. Um, one, the entire body of this pen is made out of a more premium material, uh, titanium. It's not at all cheap to buy titanium, mill titanium, all that stuff is just drastically more expensive than when you're working with, say, uh, a resin or something like that. So that's contributing to the cost directly. Um, there are a lot of other things as well. One, the fact that you get two nibs with this. Now, a steel nib is not that expensive. You know, you can buy in most places for about $15, but you do get that in the box. You also get a titanium nib. Those are usually three, four, five times the cost of a steel nib. Depends on where you get them from. And on top of that, you get an entire extra milled titanium rollerball pen section. So, for a titanium pen, two nibs, and two sections, this is not a bad price at all. Uh, this pen is not perfect, but for that price, I can kind of forgive it. Um, I think it would be a lot more compelling to a lot more people if it came in, um, you know, maybe sub $100 range, but that's not possible with this. The materials are, are too premium, they include too much stuff in the box for you to expect that. So while I think this is a, a darn near perfect gateway drug into the world of fountain pens for, you know, rollerball people or something like that, um, it certainly is kind of priced out of that. 
so it, it's a little iffy. Um, but if you use rollerballs and fountain pens, kind of like I do, this is probably going to be an amazing, amazing pen for you. And I think the price is perfectly reasonable for that. On to the neutral. So um, the only thing here really, and this applies to the stainless steel as well as the titanium nib, uh, the flow is a little too dry for me. Um, I didn't experience any skipping issues, but it felt like it was going to have that. Um, I had a couple of hard starts with the titanium nib, um, nothing too, too major, and, and most of that's kind of worked itself out, but it was there. So it's it's not amazing. You know, it's their, their Bach nibs. I really wish they'd go with Yovo, but I think Bach is the only way you can get titanium nibs, so I kind of understand that to a degree. I mean, it'd be easier to source both nibs from the same place. I, I, I get it. But, yeah, they're not they're not stellar nibs here, um, but they're not terrible. So, you, compared to other pens that you would get in that, you know, $240 price range, if you're comparing it to a gold nib from, you know, Pilot or, say, a Lamy 2000 nib, it's not there. But if you compare it to... A Visconti in that price range, it's it's a lot better in my opinion um, compared to most other steel and titanium nibs right in this price range. This is perfectly acceptable. All right, on to the dislike. I have one thing here, and to, I think to uh, a lot of non-fountain pen people, which is probably what this is marketed towards, um, I don't think they're going to notice or care. And this may have been purely intentional to kind of take the guesswork out of it. But there's no option to select nib sizing. Um, if this was intentional, I understand it, but I don't like it and I don't agree with it. However, if this is unintentional, it is a massive oversight. I very seriously doubt it was. Um, but when you buy this, you get a fine nib on the titanium and on the steel. That's it. All right, onto the writing sample. Um, so this here is the titanium nib. And the cool thing about titanium nibs is you can get a lot of line variation without having to pay the price uh, for, say, a, a gold nib or anything like that. Um, so you can see reverse writing line, regular writing line, and line with some pressure. You could probably coax even a bit more out of there if you really pushed it, but you need to be careful. In general, though, this feed does a really, really good job of keeping up with the flex from this titanium nib, which I do have to commend them on. Um, I know it wasn't necessarily them, it's probably Bach, but it's, it's nice. Um, generally... You know, some nibs have trouble keeping up with the flow of just the nib tip itself. The fact that this can actually do some flex is impressive. All right, this here is the steel nib. And you're not going to get nearly as much line variation out of a steel nib, of course. Um, although this is a softer steel nib, so you can actually get some, which is, again, you know, pretty impressive. Um, so reverse writing line, regular line, lemon some pressure. So you can coax a little bit of line variation out of this, and it, it's not too bad. Again, this this feed on this one keeps up just fine. Um, when I first got them, they were a little dry, but it's not too bad now. I'm still not the wettest thing on earth, but it, it's it's not that that awful. And here's the rollerball section put on the pen. This is the uh, uniball refill that it comes with again um, I will I have some footage earlier in the video that I'll, I'll, I'll roll in um, at that point just to show you what changing a refill looks like it's very very simple and this takes all kinds of refills uh, any you know rollerball ballpoint whatever uh, pilot g2 pilot uh, is it Energel? juice doesn't matter the these are it's it's ridiculous honestly So the roller ball. And believe it or not, you can't get any line variation out of this one. Let's do a reverse writing line. Regular line. Line with some pressure. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh this is really, really uh 
innovative, I guess, would be the, the proper way to to say that. And um, just real quick, in case you didn't notice what was going on in the refill changing video itself, there's actually, if you twist, grab up here and twist, there's a small section in the middle that rotates and releases that refill. You can kind of pull it in or out, and it works better with the pin open, but you get the gist of it, and then you can kind of lock it into place. All right, so in conclusion, what do I think about the Big Idea Design Tie Ultra Pen? I think that this is a very innovative and promising step forward. There's very little innovation nowadays in the world of fountain pens. They've been around for well over 100 years at this point, and it's just nice to see a company trying something new. Is this crazy? Not really, but it's very, very practical. And from a usability standpoint, it's it's outstanding. Um, it comes with two different nib types. Comes with a roller ball. If you if you're wanting to spend a decent amount of money on a pen and just try out a bunch of different stuff, or if you're looking for a pen that can kind of do a little bit of everything, this is probably one of the best options on the market. I absolutely love this pen. I don't love everything about it. Really wish they would give some nib options. Uh, fine is not what I personally would have picked. Um, I wish the flow were a little bit better, but for their first fountain pen, in terms of execution and design, this is really, really, really good. Um, so thanks again to everybody over at Big Idea Design for sending this along. I was really, really excited to take a look at this, and I'm really glad that I got the opportunity. Um, so I will leave a link down to this pen in the description. If, if you have the money and you want to try something new and exciting, Go buy one. It's it's awesome. Um, I'll also leave a link down there to uh, my Patreon if you'd like to join that, as well as the Fountain Pen Discord that I'm uh, a moderator of. I would love to see all you guys over there and love to chat with you um, about fountain pens and whatever else. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.